We are on the record at the beginning of media number one, volume one. Contracted by Hahn and Bowersock. Please begin. This is the testimony of Elizabeth Holmes going on the record in San Francisco, California at 9 o'clock a.m. on July 11, 2017. Ms. Holmes, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. My name is Jessica Chan, and with me are Rahul Kolhekar, Monique Winkler, Michael Foley, Mark Katz in the back, and Jason Habermeyer. I and Rahul Kolhekar are staff attorneys in this office. Um, Mr. Foley is a staff accountant. Ms. Winkler is um, an assistant director in this office, and Mr. Habermeyer and Mr. Katz are trial counsel in the San Francisco Regional Office of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. We are officers of the commission for the purposes of this proceeding. This is an investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission in the matter of Theranos Inc. SF 4030 to determine whether there have been violations of certain provisions of the federal securities laws. However, the facts developed in this investigation might constitute violations of other federal or state civil or criminal laws. <clears throat> Prior to the opening of the, the record, you were provided with a copy of the formal order of investigation in this matter. The formal order will be available for your examination during the course of this proceeding. Have you had an opportunity to review the formal order? I, I'm not sure if I have reviewed it, but I know our team has it. Do you have any questions about it? I don't. Prior to the opening of the record, you were also provided with a copy of the Commission Supplement Information Forum 1662, which has been marked as Theranos Exhibit 1. Have you had an opportunity to review Exhibit 1? I have. You also received this Forum 1662 with your subpoena for testimony, correct? Yes. Do you have any questions about Exhibit 1? I don't. Ms. Holmes, are you represented by counsel today? I am. Would counsel please identify themselves, and if you wouldn't mind providing your firm name, address, and phone number as well. I'm Stephen Neal with Cooley. Uh, my phone number is 650-843-5182, and I'm one of the attorneys representing Ms. Holmes. John Dwyer, also with Cooley, 650-843-5000. Uh, uh, David Taylor, the general counsel of Theranos. Chris Davies of Wilmer, 202-663-6187. Uh, Bill McLucas, uh, Wilmer, 202-663-6622. Uh, Ali Lieber with Cooley. Give me a minute for my phone number. 650-843-5376. Uh, and would you also provide your uh, office addresses as well? Uh, for for the, all three Cooley people, our office address is 3175 Hanover Street, Palo Alto, 94304. Uh, 1701 Page Mill Road, Palo Alto, 94304. And Bill and I are at 1875 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C., 20006. Do you represent Ms. Holmes in her personal capacity? I represent Ms. Holmes in all capacities. Okay. And what about uh, Mr. Taylor and, and the, the attorneys from Wilmer? I represent the company, Theranos. I represent the company and Ms. Holmes as CEO. Same, the company and Ms. Holmes. Before we start today, I want to go over some ground rules with you. The court reporter will be recording and transcribing what we say, so it's important for us to talk only one at a time. So if you could please wait until I finish my question before you answer, and I'll try and do the same. I, I won't ask the next question before you finish your answer as well. For the same reason, it's important that you answer audibly um, and uh, don't respond with gestures. Uh, even though it's a less formal setting, the oath you just made has the same effect as if you were testifying in court and carries with it the same penalty for perjury. It is also a crime to knowingly present false information during the course of this investigation. Do you understand? I do. If there's anything you don't understand, please let me know so that I can re repeat or rephrase the question. If you don't tell me you don't understand, then I'll just assume that you do understand the questions asked. If you need to take a break at any time, just let me know and we can take a break. The only thing that I ask is that you not ask to take a break while a question is pending before you. Yeah. Are you taking any medications that would impair your ability to understand my questions or answer uh, fully and truthfully? No. Is there any reason why you can't give full, complete, and truthful testimony today? No. I'm handing to you what's been marked as Theranos Exhibit 191. 
One more copy. That's all right. Thank you. This is a subpoena that we issued for your testimony. Are you appearing here today pursuant to the subpoena? I am. Thank you. And you can put that to the side over here. We'll start making a pile in the center of the table. to you what's been marked Exhibit 192. Thank you. Exhibit 192 purports to be a uh, background questionnaire that's dated July. <coughs> July 10th, I believe. Or is it July 2nd? July 2nd, 2nd. 2017. Did you also send us a revised questionnaire yesterday, which is July 10th? We did. Okay. Um, have you seen Exhibit 192 before? I have. What is Exhibit 192? Uh, the completed background questionnaire. Did you complete uh, the questionnaire on or about July 2nd, 2017? Yes. Is the information in Exhibit 192 true and correct to the best of your knowledge? It is. And if you would turn to page four of the questionnaire. Under securities accounts, number uh, question number 15. Yes. You noted here um, in this questionnaire that was Yes. yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm I'm not completely sure. And if you would look over at page five then, there are two uh, bank accounts listed there. What are the source of funds for these accounts? Just my, my paycheck from Theranos. If you turn to page seven, is this an accurate reflection at the bottom, um, your answer to question 26? regarding your educational history? Yes. And then going on to page nine under your employment history, which is question 32, uh, and going on to page 10, is that an accurate reflection of your employment history? Yes. Thank you. you can put that aside. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, I wanted to start with uh, the time period starting in 2010, and just let's just focus on the year 2010 for a moment. Um, if you could just tell us the state of Theranos at that time, I think that would be helpful, just in terms of how many employees you had, where you were located, if you had an office, um, just some information about where the company was at that time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was seven years ago, so I don't remember exactly. I, I think our offices were at 3200 Hillview. Um, we were um, probably about um, 100 employees or so, I would guess, maybe 150. And um, we were beginning to engage with uh, retail pharmacies on, on the idea that we had to bring our technology to um, to retail locations. Who was working with you in management at that time? I, I believe Sunny Balwani was our president at that time and, and chief operating officer. Was there anyone else who was operating the company with you besides Mr. Balwani? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't think we had uh, other senior management members at that time. We had, I think, a couple of side um, from a technology perspective. And who were they? Um, I believe on the assay development side may still have been there. Um, and um, I, I believe was there at that time. I don't know if he was, there's probably a couple others. What were his roles at that time? 
Uh, I was focused on the two aspects of our hardware, which is the consumables and the device. I think at that point probably more on the consumables than the device. Started focusing on computational biosciences, which is sort of the algorithms, um, and then expanded into a broader product role over time. Just so I understand, what do you mean by consumables? I'm sorry, uh, the pieces of plastic that go into the device, we call them cartridges. It's the it's the, the plastic pieces that our chemicals go into for our distributed <coughs> testing device. So tell us what, what products Theranos had at the time, had developed at that time. Um, so we had an earlier version of what we call our mini lab system um, that is the distributed testing device. And uh, we'd invested in development of a, a large number of chemistries um, for a very broad range of, of different tests. Um, and, um, and then the associated software, sort of foundational pieces for doing predictive modeling. What did the mini lab do? The mini lab in 2010? Yes. Um, it ran um, a set of, well, we had two versions of it, I think, at that point. There was the 3.5 device, which ran a set of immunochemistries, and then there was a four-series platform that we were working on that could run a broad range of test methods. So the 3.5 version, how many tests could it run at that time in 2010? Um, I, I, I don't know exactly what the number was. I think just from the development reports that I've seen that there was probably um, tens of, of tests. I mean, we, we got up to about um, somewhere between 70 to 90 immunochemistries. I'm not sure exactly what time we finished them. So it would have, would have been tens at least in that period of time. Okay. And, and you say that you reviewed some development reports. What are those development reports? Um, the reports for all the chemistries that we had worked on for our small sample testing method. Are these, devel are these development reports, um, are they put together by the uh, chemistry groups at Theranos? Yes. Okay, so there are the development of an assay and the chemistries that go along with it. Exactly. Had you, had you transferred those chemistries onto the platform, onto the Minilab platform at that time? Uh, yes. Um, a, a number of them. There's probably some that we hadn't, but, but yes. How many had been transferred onto the 3.5? I don't know specifically um, in 2010, yeah, but again, I think it's probably at least tens of, of tests. Okay. So when you say tens of tests, you mean something less than 100? Yes. Um, and who, who would know how many of these tests have been transferred onto your platform? As of 2010? Yes. Um, I, I don't know specifically. I'm sure um, as a team we could go back and try to look at the dates of all the development reports. Um, I, I don't know that there's one person that necessarily knows um, that now. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Had those tests, um, you said tens, tens of tests, had those tests been validated on the mini lab at that time, on the 3.5? They had to what we understood validation to mean. Our, our understanding of what was required for validation changed later, but at that point, we thought they were. Okay, and what was your understanding of what validation meant in, t in 2010? Um, there was a, a basic guidance document that we had um, become familiar with through the work we were doing for pharmaceutical companies on assay development, and we thought that if we developed an tested or validated the test to that guidance document, the test was validated. What guidance document is that? I, I don't know specifically. I think it's based on FDA guidelines for development of a, of a test. Yeah, who provided that guidance document to you? Um, I believe through the development work that we did for either Centicor or Celgene, it, it at least affirmed our understanding of that guidance document. Yeah, I'm. I'm I'm not sure if we had it specifically before that. Did you review that document? Did I personally review it? Did you it? personally review that document? I don't think so. Who reviewed it on your team? Um, whoever was leading the assay development at that time. Who do you think that was? Was it? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Okay, and then also for your mini lab, I think you yeah. mentioned, was it a 4.0 device? So I, I called it four series, four which series. is, there's been many of them in that, in that iteration that we've been working on. Okay, so what could the four series mini lab do? So at that point, I think what we'd shown was the capability of the different detectors that are in it to function with these different methods, um, namely um, different tests you know, use different methods to measure things, and we were trying to get a range of methods so that we could uh, measure more things on the device. Okay. So how many tests could that device perform in 2010? I don't know. Was that, is it fair to say that the device was still in development then? Absolutely. Okay. What were you using the 3.5 device to do? Were you using it for patient testing or for any of your clinical trials? We did. Um, and that, to be clear, I'm not sure if it was the 3.5 or the 3.0 at, at that time in 2010. Um, we used that system uh, for pharmaceutical clinical studies and then also uh, for a study we did for the DOD at um, Fort Sam Houston and a series of burn hospitals. Okay. So you were using, you said there was a 3.0 uh, and a 3.5. What was the difference between the two versions? They were very similar. Um, the core architecture was the same. I think it was essentially more robust. Uh, robust in what way? Um, I, I don't know specifically. I, I believe we improved our manufacturing processes, um, and, um, and I'm, not, I'm not sure what else we did. Who would know what the difference was between the 3.0 and the 3.5? <coughs> um, I believe would know. Uh, yeah. Uh, would know as well? Um, depending on when we cut over to the 3.5, I'm, I'm just not sure. I, I can't remember in the 2010 time period um, where we were on that, and, and I don't remember when exactly he left the company. You, you mentioned the use of the term mini lab. Um, yeah. Is, is that what you called it back in 2010? So um, when Walgreens asked us to go to Johns Hopkins for due diligence. They called it a mini lab at that time, and we began using that term. But uh, there were other terms that were also used. So I guess I, just because you know, I, I, I'm not a scientist. So I just want to understand the different sure. terms that might be used. So, so we've got the mini lab. I think you you said 3.5 and, and a four series. Were there any other kind of terms that the company called its? Um, distributed testing device in, in the 2010 time frame? Um, I, I know that people referred to it as an Edison device, um, and we later referred to it as a TSPU device. There may have been others. Thank you. So you mentioned that the company was doing some work for pharmaceutical companies. What type of work was the company doing? Um, we were developing chemistries to work on small volumes of sample, um, and then in some cases putting them onto this distributed testing platform, an earlier version of Minilab. We were also working on models uh, to simulate the way that drugs would work um, in people. Uh, you said you were working on models to simulate the way drugs would work in people. What, what were you trying to understand in that process? Or what were the pharmaceutical companies trying to understand? And how were you helping them? Yeah, they're trying to understand if they dose in a certain way, um, is it going to work or is it going to have a safety issue? And we were building simulations that you could feed data into uh, to help predict that so that you could speed up the amount of time that it would take to actually test it in humans. And then you also mentioned a second um, project you were working on was um, being able to test smaller samples. Was that something that pharmaceutical companies were discussing with you, the possibility of doing clinical trials for? Yes. Okay. And was this something that um, they initiated or something that you initiated um, where you were requesting their help to conduct these, these clinical trials? Um, I, I think both. I mean, it, it was a number of interactions over 
over multiple years before 2010, um, we certainly um, sought partnerships early on and, and then um, you know, had the opportunity to look at uh, other partnerships as we started to build relationships with those pharmas. How many companies um, did you have contracts with at that time? In 2010? In 2010. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know specifically, but I would guess it was around 10. Um, was the company generating any revenues in 2010? I, I don't think so. I, 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 again, I, I don't remember specifically. Maybe a little bit from uh, from the burn study. When you say burn study, uh, what are you referring to? That was the DOD study at, uh, through, through Fort Sam Houston. Okay. And who were you dealing with on that study? At, at the DOD. At the DOD. What was that uh, study for? It was. Um, seeing if the ability to test smaller samples would allow you to um, get more frequent time points in people who'd been burned so that you could tell whether the, the filters that you were putting into their kidneys worked well enough to flush out their systems. Uh, do you know how much money the company was generating in revenues from that? It would have been study? very small. Yeah. When you say very small, what do you mean? Um, I think the, the whole contract was a few hundred thousand dollars. Um, I'm going to hand to you. <laughs> What's been marked? There in its exhibit 193. Exhibit 193 purports to be a January 22nd, 2010 email from to Elizabeth Holmes with the subject line, for, uh, there's an attachment to the email, but the starting base number is THPFM 00006900035. And the attachment um, starts with uh, 39. Have you seen Exhibit 193 before? I, I don't recognize it, but I might have seen it a long time ago. What is Exhibit 193? I'm not quite sure. Do you, do you mind if I take a minute to read sure. the email? It looks like some type of draft financials that prepared for um, the communications referenced in the email. Okay. Um, and did you receive Exhibit 193 on or about January 22nd, 2010? Yes. So you'll see um, that you're preparing to give a presentation to ATA Ventures. Do you know who ATA Ventures was? 
they're one of our investors. Okay. And had you given a presentation um, regarding uh, Theranos, Theranos' financial situation before this? To them or to anybody? I'm sorry? To them? To, 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 to ATA Ventures. Was this a regular occurrence? Were you, um, were you expected to give presentations to their board? No. So if you turn to the attachment, uh, there are some financial statements. And if you turn to the monthly PL, which is the second page of the financial statements, you'll see that um, Theranos is on track to generate about $5 million in revenues in 2009. Is that consistent with your understanding of the revenues that Theranos is generating at that time? You know, I, I don't remember um, what my understanding was at that time. Do you have any reason to believe that um, this, is, this is an accurate representation of the revenues that the company was generating at the time? Do I have a reason to believe it's inaccurate? Is it yeah, do you have any reason to believe that it's in inaccurate? No. Okay. Um, and would these revenues be have been generated from those pharmaceutical companies and from DOD? Um, it looks, just based on the email exchange reading it here, that they're all associated with pharmaceutical companies. If you look back at the email, since you're looking at it right now, um, the third email down on the first page mm -hmm. from, she says, this revenue includes potential adjustments. We need to agree with KPMG for Celgene, Senecor, Shearing Plow, and Novartis. And there are a number of dates that she puts um, next to those pharmaceutical company names. Uh, some in 2009, assume completion, some in June 2010. Were all of these contracts coming to a conclusion around the 2009, 2010 timeframe? I don't know. I, I just can't remember. What is your What is your knowledge of um, when these contracts came to an end? Um, I, I have in my mind that the Celgene relationship went on for a period longer, and I thought that Centicor was also looking at doing additional programs with us. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about the other two. So if you go back to the financial statements, which is the attachment to the email, the monthly BS, which, do you understand BS to mean, to stand for balance sheet? Yes. Um, and if you look at, in December 2009, cash and investments is three point, about $3.7 million. Is that consistent, do you sorry, see that? I'm, not, oh, I'm sorry, December 2009? Yes. Yes. Is that consistent with your understanding that Theranos had about $3.7 million in cash at the end of 20, uh, 2009? I, I can't remember. Do you remember uh, Theranos being short on cash around this time frame? In December of 2009? Or of late 2009? Um, You know, I, I remember that when Sonny joined the company, he um, bridged the company. So I had actually thought that we'd ended up getting cash in before the end of 09. I'm not sure from this email. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So you said uh, Sonny Balwani joined the company and he bridged the company. What did, what did you mean by that? Um, he, he did a bridge loan for the company when he joined the board, which I thought was before the end of 2009, but my dates could be wrong. It was a long time ago. When did Sunny Balwani join the company? I, I thought in about September of 2009, or August of 2009, I, but that's from memory, it, it may be off. Okay. Why did um, Sunny Balwani need, need to provide a bridge for the company? Well, I knew that we needed cash, and we were deciding whether to do an equity raise or not, and and he had offered to do this for, for the company. Okay, so you knew sometime at the, towards the end of 2009 that the company was short on cash? Yes, yeah. What was his bridge to the company? What was the amount of the loan? Um, 
I, I don't remember specifically. I think it was about $20 million. Um, what were the terms of that loan? I don't remember. Was it paid back? Yes. When was it paid back? Um, I, I don't know specifically. Has it been paid back, though? Yes. Did there come a time when, um, around the 2010 time frame, that you decided to change the business model from working for the pharmaceutical companies to a different business model? We decided we were going to work to bring our technology to patients and physicians. We thought we would always continue the pharmaceutical studies around the retail model, um, but that that could serve as a channel for it. Um, and so you said you decided to change the model to um, provide services to physicians and consumers. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you do to, to realize that vision? Just so you can best answer the question, what do you mean by that? So, so, so it's, it sounds like, you know, you were, the company was focused on the pharmaceutical trials I guess pre-2010, and there, it sounds like you might have done a little bit of work after that period, but that the company was uh, looking then to reach out to consumers and physicians to provide its blood testing to them. Was there, how, at, at that point, did you decide that you were going to reach out to some business partners to realize that vision? What happened? We did. We, we thought a lot about what the rate channel was to make lab testing more accessible and we became very interested in the retail pharmacy as as a channel for lab testing um, I I know we reached out to some and and I, I think some may have reached out to us at at that time as well um, and we engaged in discussions <coughs> around partnership whose idea was it to start focusing on the retail pharmacy business I, I don't remember specifically. I mean, it, it, it related to what we were doing with testing of drug levels, and so it almost became a, a progression from that. Okay. Um, so now I want to sort of focus on the state of the company in, in 2013. So this is three years later. Um, what had changed about the company? So 2013 was the year that we launched our uh, retail infrastructure. Yeah, and so we'd spent a lot of time getting ready for that and figuring out how to um, operationalize that and, and most importantly moving to a different business model, um, which we've referred to as a phase one, phase two approach to introducing our technologies where you start with centralized testing and then you work to get your distributed testing platform out. Okay. How many how many employees did you have at the company at that time? Um, I don't know specifically. Had it grown? Absolutely. Um, and you know in terms of um, I guess what divisions of the company did you, had grown since 2010? Um, I know we'd grown our our assay divisions in terms of the work on the chemistries that we were doing. Um, we at that point had established a clinical lab and had brought in a lab director to run it and um, I, I'm sure there was there was growth across the board. Were there any changes in management at that time? Um, I, I don't know specifically um, whether there'd been changes on the product leadership side by that point. Um, Sonny was still our president and COO and, um, and was, was largely running operations. Were you still at the same Hillview location by 2013 or had Theron has moved us up to another location? Um, I think it may have been in 2013 that we moved to 1601 California. I'm not sure exactly when we moved. And from the time in 2010 until 2013, had the company also raised money? I believe we raised money in 2010, and then um, I, George is a director 
invested in 2011, and then and then again, I, I think in the end of 13 or early 14. Okay. So you did some uh, fundraising in 2010, some in 2013, and then some in 2014. Yes, I'm not sure if it closed in the end of 2013 or early 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, sorry, when you said George is a director, do you, are you refer to George Schultz? Y yes, sorry. So I just want to turn for a moment to management of the company. Um, so you mentioned that you and Mr. Balwani were, um, would it be fair to say that you were the senior most executives at the company? We were. Dur this is during the 2013 time frame. So I just want to focus on the 2013 yeah. time frame. Who else were senior managers at the company at the time? Um, well, uh, by, you said in the 2013 time period? Yes. Um, by that point, Clinical Lab. Um, and um, on the product side, there would have been um, a number of technical leaders. I, I don't know who specifically was in leadership in, in 2013. Who did report to you? Um, I, I'm not sure in, in his offer letter, um, Sonny managed him um, as part of his oversight of the clinical labs. Okay. Um, and then we talked a little bit about when uh, Mr. Balwani was hired, but why was he hired? He originally joined our board, and at that point, because we thought we were going to really be building out these models and that the ultimate value of the company was data, uh, that a large portion of our business was going to be being a software company and we thought he had a really good background in software and that he would bring that leadership as we worked to build on that. Okay, so you just mentioned that a large part of the company was the software and you were going to become a data company. So that we, we that thought it, it would be. Okay, uh, so yeah. explain that a little bit more. Um, the, the purpose of what we try to do with Minilab and getting people access to the health data is so that they can use it, hopefully for purposes of early detection. And the way that will be realized is through models and algorithms and decision support systems. We had started with Celgene and building out those models and we'd done it in a couple other places and we saw that as the ultimate product for the company as we went to go toward serving consumers and physicians. And so we thought that Theranos would be a, a sensors and software company and that the investment in decision support was how ultimately people would be able to use this data for early detection. What were uh, Sunny Balwani's qualifications for the job? You mentioned that she, you know the company was hoping to be a software company. Did he have yeah. qualifications in that sector? He did. Uh, he built a software company and he had worked at Microsoft and I believe Lotus when it had started out here. Okay. Um, and did he have any qualifications in the lab testing business? He did not. Or in pathology or anything like that? Not to my knowledge. to you what's been marked there in this exhibit 194. Exhibit 194 uh, purports to be an organizational chart of um, some sort, but at the top of that chart is you, Elizabeth Holmes, as founder and CEO, um, with base number TS000001. Have you seen exhibit uh, 194 before? Uh, I, I don't know. You don't know that you've seen this before? Yeah, I, I don't recognize it, but I, I might have. Okay. Um, did the company keep organizational uh, charts for the business? Um, very, very loosely. Okay. As you look at the people on this chart, uh, when do you think this structure might have existed? Was this, this was produced to the SEC by the company uh, in, I believe, 2015. Would this have been an accurate reflection of uh, the managers who were present at the company at that time? 
Um, I'm just looking at it. So, I mean, it, it must have been as of 2015. Yes, these people were all managers in the company. Uh, were there any, um, uh, you know, going back to 2013, were there, there, would there be any changes to this chart for the 2013 time frame? Yes. What were those changes? Uh, many of these people didn't work for the company at that time. And um, I, I thought of our operating structure a little bit differently than this. How did you think of your operating structure in 2013? Um, I was very externally focused at that point in time. Um, and we essentially had, we, we didn't have um, marketing or, or even internal um, general counsel at that point. Um, we had a product organization that was really partnering with the CLIA lab to try to get assays to go live under the LDT model. And so there was sort of one thing that the company was doing at that point, which was taking these assays live in the CLIA lab. Sorry, you used a couple of acronyms then. I'm sorry. <laughs> CLIA and LDT, could you just explain yeah. to us what those are? Absolutely. CLIA, I used in the context of referring to the CLIA lab, which was our clinical lab. CLIA is the Clinical Lab Improvement Act, which is the regulation for labs. Um, LDT is laboratory developed test, and those are tests that are developed and validated in house. And so that's why I was referring to essentially the product and clinical lab organization as being very tightly integrated as of 2013. So who was in charge of that product team? I didn't 2013. Hear that. Who was in charge of the product team in 2013? There would have been assay leads, um, and um, and and I'm trying to think of whether there was a single hardware lead at that point. I'm I'm not sure. We didn't have a, a senior vice president of product. Who were the assay leads? I I'm not I'm not sure. I I think Seth's name was still there. Um, working really closely with the assay teams at that point, um, and there would have been others. What was Sung's role at Theranos in 2013? You, you know, again, it's, it's hard to pinpoint at specific points in time. He got involved in product development and um, was, was, I believe at that point, helping with the core product development initiatives. Did he have any qualifications in lab testing or in pathology? Um, I, I don't believe he had prior experience in lab testing. I, I had understood that he ultimately met the requirements for someone to be a lab director. What was his background? Um, <coughs> he had a, I, uh, so this is my memory of it, this could be incorrect, I, I understood that he had a predictive modeling I was talking about for <coughs> modeling biology systems and, um, and then had had experience at Theranos. So you, you mentioned that you understood that he had the qualifications to be a lab director. Was he a lab director at Theranos? He yeah. was, yeah. Uh, what were the dates um, uh, between which he was a, the lab director? Um, I, I don't know exactly. I, certainly in, until we closed it. Um, I don't know when he became the lab director. And what was your understanding as to how he was qualified to be lab director? What, what sorts of degrees did he have that made him qualified to, to be in that role? I, I didn't know specifically. I just knew that Sonny and the team that had looked at that said that he was. Um, and then you mentioned that you weren't sure who was in charge of the hardware or the manufacturing side at that time. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Um, was was it was he still around? I don't know whether he'd started at that point. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. Was there a team that was in charge of putting the chemistries onto the hardware? Um, I don't know. Who would have done that? It would have been part of the clinical lab operation. Part of the CLIA lab operation, is that right? Yeah, I mean, the, the product team, because we were focused on lab developed tests, was very tightly integrated with the clinical lab at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they had a specific team that was, that was focused on that. OK. 
and the person who was in charge of the clinical lab would have been? Yes. How did you split up your responsibilities with Mr. Balwani? Um, he was focused on operations. Um, I was focused on our vision to the extent I was involved on the technology side and inventing and on ultimately some of the policy work, like the work to change the law in Arizona um, and, um, and, and strategy. Um, were there particular areas that you managed versus areas that he managed? Um, I, I tried to stay involved with all of the creative aspects in terms of the the creative sort of invention side of the technology and the creative side of um, the way we were trying to change the way people thought about their right to access lab results along the line of the um, Arizona law that we passed. Um, he was focused on the clinical lab operations and the, the internal operations of the business. Okay, so if you look back at Exhibit 194, and I know this is, this is probably some time in the later time period rather than 2013, yeah. but it looks like the number of um, for instance, the chief creative officer was uh, reporting to you, the marketing, the chief marketing officer, general counsel. So there were a lot of corporate yes. functions that reported to you at that time. Was that the same in 2013? For instance, we, the controller also was reporting to you at that time. Um, I, I don't know where on, on the org chart mm -hmm. they were. We, we didn't have a general counsel in 2013. We didn't have any of these I, I don't think we had any of these marketing people in house at that time. They may have been. I think they joined after that. Um, I, I, I'm not sure um, who functionally was reporting to me in, in 2013 on the product side. Okay, and then you'll see that there who looked to be on the uh, and I guess as well. Mm -hmm. So these were all products, you know, and assays people. Were they all reporting to you back in 2013 as well? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Was there some, um, even if on paper they were yeah. reporting to you or Sunny Balwani, was there often some crossover between um, who people reported to, whether it was you or to Mr. Balwani? How did, how did, think, how did the reporting structure work? We, we did not do a good job at maintaining org charts, um, and I, I think there was an understanding of how functionally we were operating, um, especially pre-2015, um, which was essentially along the lines of, of what um, I described. Okay, so you, you mentioned before that Mr. Balwani was overseeing the lab and some of the product development, particularly also on the software side. Um, you know, what, what were you overseeing in that process? Were you also involved in product development? I, I was the CEO of the company, so I would engage um, with different teams. My sort of involvement, to the extent I was engaged on the product side, was mostly on the creative parts and the invention sort of side, or if we ran into challenges, could we figure out a way to solve them technically from an invention standpoint? Um, and and then, and then on some of the other things that that I was alluding to from a strategy perspective, were you kept apprised of developments uh, in the products area and in the clinical lab? Generally, yes. Who would apprise you of the, those developments? Mostly Sunny, um, but occasionally others. Okay. What about um, the company's partnerships? Who was overseeing that process? Um, I had a very close relationship with Steve Bird at Safeway. Um, Sunny managed the Walgreens relationship. What about other business partners? Did you also similarly split, split up the other partners? Um, I would have to think of who specifically to, to think of who managed them. Those were, to my memory, the, the two major relationships that we were interfacing with at this period of time. Um, what about the DOD, the Department of Defense? Um, we had 
board members who were very engaged on in talking to people within DOD. And um, then we had, I, I was certainly in uh, some of those meetings. And, um, and then internally we had um, at, at least one project manager who was helping to coordinate uh, logistics. Um, we, we spent a lot of time developing technology there, but we never really focused on um, getting those systems off the ground because we were so focused on the retail um, deployments. When you say that you were, um, you never got those systems off the ground, what, what do you mean by that? You were asking about managing partnerships and it wasn't the same kind of you know, active partnership that, that Walgreens was. So, for so when you say for this is for the Department of Defense projects, yeah, you weren't able to get the projects off the ground. Do you do you mean that you weren't able to deploy Theranos services uh, with the Department of Defense in the end? We, beside the um, Institute for Surgical Research and, and a couple others, we didn't um, fulfill the contract opportunities that we had. Why didn't you fulfill those contract opportunities? We, I mean, we didn't have the bandwidth to do anything except for try to make the retail relationship successful. What were the other two divisions within the Department of, of Defense that you had contracts with that you were able to fulfill besides um, the Institute for Surgical Research? Um, from memory, we did um, a little bit of testing with AFRICOM, and um, we did a little bit associated with the NASA space program. Um, that someone else within DOD had referred us to. And what happened to those relationships? They were positive. We, we just didn't take any next steps with them uh, based on focus and, and bandwidth internally. Did Theranos receive any revenues from AFRICOM or NASA for those projects? I don't believe from, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't know about AFRICOM. But you think for NASA? Theranos didn't receive any revenues. I, I don't think so. Okay, what about, oh, I'm sorry. You, you mentioned Theranos board members were involved in facilitating your communications with the DOD. Who, who on Theranos' board uh, Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to respond to her question about who was managing the relationships. We um, and, and made that comment in that context. Um, who on our board? Uh, <coughs> George Schultz, um, primarily. Who is managing uh, the regulatory strategy for the company? Again, in the, in the 2013? Yeah. In, I'm just talking about the 2013 time frame. Um, we had, we, we tried to hire some of the best outside lawyers um, in the medical device and clinical lab space. Okay, and who from the company was overseeing that process? Um, I, you know, I don't remember specifically in 2013. I believe, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Were you and Sunny Balwani uh, jointly involved in um, the regulatory strategy, thinking about what approvals needed to be obtained and so forth? Yes, absolutely. What about uh, the company's financial condition? Who was overseeing, um, for instance, I think in 2015 it looks like reporting to you. Was she also reporting to you in 2013? Um, to the extent Sonny was at the company, he primarily interfaced with her on just financial operations and cash management. Um, so uh, as of 2015, I'm sorry, the question was 2015? Uh, I'm actually talking about 2013. I yeah. want to understand who was in charge of the financial conditions of the company, making sure that the company was, the operations were going smoothly, that there was enough cash. So were, it would be Sunny Balwani. Yes. Were you at all involved in that process? Were you consulted? I, I may have been. I mean, I had very constant interactions with Sunny. What about um, human resources, personal issues? Who was overseeing that? Um, I, I don't know when she joined for a period of time, and she may have been there in 2013. Did she have the authority to hire or fire uh, personnel? Um, 
she had the authority to make recommendations. Um, I, I don't. I, I believe there's a couple instances in which she hired directly, um, but not regularly. Did she need to uh, obtain approval from either you or Sunny Balwani before she hired anyone? That was certainly the expectation. Yeah. And what about if she needed to fire anyone? Did those instructions come from you or Mr. Balwani? Or the uh, manager, um, if there was a manager who felt that an employee had a performance issue. Were the managers at the company uh, who were below you and Mr. Balwani, were they, did they have the authority to fire personnel under them without running that by you and Mr. Balwani first? You know, I, it may be on the manufacturing side with assemblers, but generally we would have wanted to have been involved in those conversations. So generally you and Mr. Balwani would be involved in firing personnel? I think so, yeah. How would you and Sunny Balwani communicate with respect to your work? Just help me understand Just the, the question. method of communication. Did you um, text each other? Did you call each other on the phone? What did you do? All of the above. Um, we we texted. We um, were working in a very open space format. Our offices were near each other, and we would talk. Were there times when you would meet face to face, um, and were there regular meetings when you did? Uh, yes, we met face to face a lot. Were there regular meetings that were set up, maybe weekly or monthly? I don't think they were scheduled like that. Um, it was very sort of dynamic. How did how did Mr. Balwani keep you apprised of the areas of the business that he was responsible for? We we would talk, but as you, um, we operated as peers, and so he would run the areas that he was operating, and um, and talk to me about the things that he thought were relevant. So were you consulted about decisions he would be making on the product development and uh, clinical lab side? It depends on what they were. Um, on some of them, yes. Did you expect him to run those decisions by you? I expected him to share with me anything that would be material to making sure we were properly executing on our plans. Were there areas in which you disagreed? Yes. What were those areas? We, we disagreed all the time about a lot of things. Um, um, we're, we have we're very different uh, leadership styles. Uh, what would, and how would you resolve that um, discussion if you disagreed on an issue? It depends on what the issue was. I, I would generally defer to him because he was there as our president and COO. Were there areas that he would defer to you? I'm sure there were. Um, I, I don't. I would need to think specifically about you know, a specific issue to better answer the question. So I think we mentioned a number of, of different areas of the company, but for instance, on business partnerships, you know, who would be the one who would make the ultimate decision if the two of you disagreed? If it pertained to Walgreens, it was Sunny. Um, if it pertained to Safeway. Um, Probably me, but it depends on what the issue was. If it had to do with something that was in a functional area that he was managing, I would defer to him. Uh, what about uh, the Department of Defense? I, I think it would depend on, on what it was. Again, that was a different type of relationship than uh, the active commercial partnerships that we deployed. Um, what about your regulatory strategy with either FDA or the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services? Um, in general, we would defer to outside counsel on that. Were there times when you would decide that you wouldn't follow counsel's advice? Not, not that I, well, uh, not during that period. What about your finan the financial condition of the company? Were there any, uh, who would be the ultimate decision maker with respect to the company's operational and financial progress? I mean, in, in general, Sonny was. It sounds like you had a very dynamic relationship and you were, 
you would talk with Mr. Balwani a lot about different areas that you were working on. Were there times when you would also um, draft email communications to third parties? For instance, I think you said that you were in charge of the Safeway relationship that mm -hmm. Mr. Balwani would then edit and revise before sending out? Yes. And did that happen in the other way around, where he would be drafting emails to third parties that you would also revise for him before sending out? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a specific instance. I mean, our, our dynamic was that I generally um, sought his advice on how to handle things. But were there instances in which he would draft emails, which he would then review and edit and um, approve before he sent them out? I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were. I, I can't remember a specific instance sitting here. Um, but it was, it was, as you said, a dynamic interaction. Where on Theranos's um, electronic system did you keep your working files? Um, what do you mean by that? So, is there a document management system at Theranos? There is, um, and there's shared drives um, that um, different people have access to as well as local um, document files for a given person's computer. Okay, was there a particular um, folder on that shared drive that you would use to keep, um, for instance, notes for meetings or um, draft documents that you were working on? I generally kept my documents in my document folder. Um, my assistants also had a drive that they would put documents on. Okay, so you had a document folder. Was this on your hard drive or was it on the shared drive? Um, it was specific to my computer. I think it was technically hosted on a on a network, but it was um, it was only I had access to it. What did you call that folder? My documents. It was called my documents. Yeah. Okay. And, and you said you think it might have been backed up by the system. Is that what you mean? I expect it would have been, yeah. Okay. Um, are you aware of a folder called the CEO folder? I generally, I think so. And is that the other folder that you're talking about, which your assistants would put documents into? I think so. Okay. Would you ever edit documents in that folder? I don't think so. So these were this was this folder was only for your assistants and others to put documents into. Yes. And would you access the documents in that folder? I, I could access it. I don't know that I ever have. Um, I guess, what is the purpose of that CEO folder? Um, if we had documents from a meeting and they were trying to scan them because they were going to get rid of a hard copy, they would put them in that folder. Um, or other documents that they felt should go in there. Uh, they, they had control over it. Okay. And did uh, Sunny Balwani also have a working folder as well? I believe so, yes. What folder was that called? I don't know. Are you aware of a folder called the 300 folder? I am. What, what is that folder? Um, I think that is where he kept um, strategic um, documents, and I think he had some of his models in there, too. Did you have access to that folder? I did. Did you go in from time to time to review or edit those documents? I don't think I have. Did you ever review documents in that folder? He would show me documents from that folder before certain meetings. Um, okay. When you say he would show you certain documents from the folder, do you mean that he would print them out and show them to you? No, I would sit in front of his computer and he would open it yeah, from that folder. Would you ever sit at your own computer and review files on his in his 300 folder? I mean, it's possible. I, I can't remember that, but it's possible. But you don't think that you might have edited any of his files from that folder? I don't think so. So I wanted to talk about um, the clinical lab for a minute. So you mentioned was the lab director in 2013. Uh, was there somebody who was in charge of the clinical lab before he came on board? Yes. Who was that? Um, I believe it was, there may have been someone in between them, uh, but at, at least... What was the clinical lab doing before it was certified? Um, before it was certified. Before it obtained CLIA certification? N nothing. Okay, so it was just, was it just constructed? Was it 
processing any blood samples? So the, the CLIO certification was in 2011, um, and it didn't exist before it obtained CLIA certification. Post-2011, um, I believe there was some uh, what we call reference testing, which is traditional testing for Safeway while we were working to refine our operational procedures. Um, and then otherwise we were, we were trying to put good systems in place to launch the lab. Okay, so you mentioned that you were doing some reference testing for Safeway. What do you mean by reference testing? Uh, they had a, a wellness center at their um, uh, headquarters and um, they asked us to be the place that would process the samples that were drawn traditionally um, and we would either process them at our lab or send them out to a reference lab and report them back to the ordering uh, practitioner there. Okay. And so you mentioned that um, the blood draws would be done traditionally. What do you mean by traditionally? Uh, venipuncture on commercially available machines. So the blood would be drawn via venipuncture and the blood samples would then be tested on third-party commercially available devices? Or a reference lab, yes. Okay. What is a reference lab? It's a place where you can send samples uh, to have analyzed by a third-party lab and they will report them back uh, to your lab and you pass those results on to the ordering practitioner. Who is, and does he have a uh, role at the company as well? He does. What was his role in 2013? I, I don't know in 2013. I think it was in product management, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure. What did that mean, product management? Um, I believe his role was primarily focused on managing business relationships um, with with people who are important to the company, but but I'm not I'm not completely clear. Uh, I mean, the product managers worked on sort of important projects for the company, and there was a wide range of projects that they um, they worked on. Who did Core Two in 2013? He reported to Sunny. And you mentioned there were a number of project managers. Mm -hmm. uh, these were project managers that reported to. They reported for a period of time. I don't know when, and then directly to Sunny after that. Who were these project managers? I'm, I'm not going to get them all by name. Um, at, at what period of time? In 2013. I believe was there at the time. Um, I, I, there were others. I I don't I don't remember them all by name. I just wanted to go through uh, each of the people that you just named and yeah. just understand what they were responsible for. So sure. I think you mentioned first. So what was his role? So I, I, outside of knowing that Sunny was using them to help manage key projects, I, I don't know specifically what they were doing. Um, I, I believe they were generally involved in retail operations um, and management of, of relationships, but I I wouldn't be able to say that it was doing this and, and Sonny was doing that. Were you familiar with what he's doing? He worked closely with me um, in supporting meetings that I was doing and um, uh, communications. Okay, what kind of meetings was he involved in? A um, broad range of meetings. Um, it could have been with, um, with partners, with investors, uh, with, uh, um, with others. Um, I, I don't know if he was working closely with me yet in 2013. Um, he was uh, before he left. Okay. What about? Uh, again, I believe operational projects related to the retail rollout. You mentioned what was his role? I, I believe same thing. And uh, yep. he was also an operations person? I, I don't know what he was doing in 2013. What about uh, is he also a project manager, or was he also a project manager in 2013? I, I don't know that he was. I, he was working within the software organization, and I, I don't know exactly what he was doing within 2013. And when you say software organization, what do you mean? Um, we had a, a team that we called the software team, and um, he was part of that team. And who did he report to? Uh, up to Sonny. I, I don't know if he directly reported to Sonny. 
Uh, did did all of these project managers have a, pri a prior relationship with? Not all of them. Some of the ones that I just listed did. Okay. What was that prior relationship? Were you involved in hiring all of them? I was. Oh, that group, yes. That group, yes. Yeah. Uh, when did you hire them? Um, I, I don't know. It, I think 2011, maybe 2012. I'm not quite sure. Why did you hire them? <coughs> because we were working 24/7, almost trying to do something good, and we needed people who wanted to work that hard and would put their heart and soul into it. Uh, did you use the project managers as sort of a liaison between you and Sunny Balwani and other employees at the company? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. Were there specific areas that uh, the project managers would be overseeing, <coughs> sort of a way for you and Sunny Balwani to delegate particular responsibilities to another group of people? I, I don't know specifically how he was using them. Um, I, I, I don't know. How did you use them? The you mentioned one, you had a re relationship with. Yeah, I used him generally for follow-ups. Um, um, What do you mean by you used and generally for follow-ups? Um, in, in a support role. So if um, we had a meeting, um, setting things up for the meeting, uh, making sure if we needed to send a note to follow up on the meeting, the note was sent, those, those types of things. Um, was he also having communications directly with, for instance, some of your business partners or even the Department of Defense? I think he did, yeah. Okay. What, and what kind of communications was he having with them? I mean, it was many years, so I'm sure it's a broad range. Um, generally, coordination um, with different people who we were interfacing with. So, when you say coordination, do you mean coordination of meetings? Coordination of, I, I mean, it could be meetings, could be discussions, could be follow up, could be response to a request. Um, would he run um, every time that he was communicating with them? Would you expect that he would run that by you first? I, I wanted generally for him to do that. He did not always do that. Okay. Were there times, though, when he would send you, for instance, draft emails that he was planning to send out to a business partner that you would then review and edit and send back to him? I'm sure there were, yeah. We've been going a little over an hour and a quarter. Should we take a short break? Um, let's take a look. I just have a few more questions, and then we can take a break. Okay. Um, so, did you have regular meetings with the project managers? I, um, I did not, to my memory. Do you know if Sunny Balwani did? I would expect that he would have. I, I don't know whether it was meetings uh, that were regularly scheduled. Okay, we can take a quick break now. Okay. Okay. This concludes media one of Elizabeth Holmes. We're off the record at 1016. Okay, let's just take a five minute break. Yeah, so if you can.